I feel like this should come with a warning. It's all right. It's not like I can see what you look like anyway. <laughs> you can't see me. You should come with a warning. The quiz can't see. And I'm still high on tramadol. <laughs> I've got no teeth. <laughs> So yeah, it's a good job we can't have kids, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> They'd be flawed. <laughs> oh dear, don't get me another headache. Right, <laughs> okay. Oh, I missed three out. Two, one. Really? I ain't no Ted Rogers. <laughs> <laughs> Who's Ted Rogers? He did that three, two, one, didn't he? Dusty Ben. Dusty Ben. <laughs> this is my game show. Oh gosh. <laughs> Hello, lovely people. You remember when I said I'd never do one of these? <laughs> yeah, You're I do. Doing it all on your own. And this is why we don't do them, really. <laughs> it's taken us ten minutes just for me to say hello. So we decided because it's been like two weeks since I've done a video, and <laughs> a lot's gone on in two weeks that we would do a bit of a catch up, wouldn't mm -hmm. we, Bubs? Because yeah. we haven't done a video for ages, no. and we said we were going to do a video together yeah. after our last video together when we moved mm -hmm. to tell you how the movers went. The move went, but then... Well, it was movers, wasn't it? Because yeah. we didn't do it. But then, a couple of weeks ago, I also told you that Chris was going in for eye surgery, and I told you I'd tell you how that went. But then, lots has happened since then. So this is just going to be a general catch-up about us, oh, isn't it? Dog, she best get her seat and sit down. We've got loads to talk about by the sounds of it. So how are you doing, Babs, after your eye surgery? Everyone, thank you so much. You've oh, yes. sent so many lovely, lovely, lovely comments about Chris, because he's, he's had this special eye surgery for... Kerry Katona. No. What's it called? Keratoconus. Say it again. And I was Keratoconus. Keratoconus. And I was really looking forward to it. Wasn't no, it wasn't. <laughs> Chris is really eye phobic. I mean, anybody is going to be like terrified mm. of having eye surgery. But when you're also like eye phobic and when you've got to be awake to have this thing done as well, it's terrifying, mm. isn't it? So yes. that's that doesn't help. And everybody's been amazing. But if somebody says you've got a phobia, just think about the way you approach it. That's all I'm saying. And don't poke the bear. Yeah, he's had lots of people just been like, oh, you'll be all right. Get, you'll be fine. And he's wound me up even more. Now you're poking me now, aren't you? I know. But no, we, um, I mean, it was more complicated because we're in Plymouth and we had to go all the way to East Grinstead, yeah. which is how far? A long way. A long way. 168 miles, I think it was. And that was by car, but yeah. we weren't well, that lucky. He's not allowed to drive because, <laughs> well, it's eye surgery. So that he was asked to take a chaperone. I don't drive apart from a mobility scooter. And that doesn't take passengers. And I don't fit in the basket. No. <laughs> so his only chaperone was me. So, as you know, I had to go with him on public transport. And we decided to do coach because, theoretically, that should have been easier than train so we did half coach half train the train just went hideously wrong well, didn't it was it? cost as well wasn't yeah, it yeah cost because it's like, really expensive they phoned me up and gave me like two weeks notice yeah and um <laughs> it coached to london and then train down to east grinstead that was the cheapest possible way and i don't get paid while i'm off sick and you're expected as the patient to get yourself there and back yeah and he, it was like 10 o'clock in the morning in the eye surgery, so we had to stay overnight somewhere the night before. There was no way around it, trying to get to East Grinstead, which was an eight-hour public service transport. Public transport. Yeah. Public, public transport. transport. <laughs> um, He's on Tramadol, by the way. So. But they're used to this. Public transport was eight hours, so to try and get there, for, we had to stay the night before. So it was just a nightmare, but we did all right, didn't we? And we could have probably come back on the day, but... I you mean, I felt you, rough. We didn't know who you were going to be, did we? I, I felt rough and I didn't know what I was going to be like. So He did so well because he was terrified. He was shaking so much. Oh. It was just like this little human vibrator. Weren't you in the... Um... <laughs> he was proper shaking. Do you remember when he didn't used to say things like that? <laughs> it's not rude to say you were a human vibrator. And Is that I, why I, you kept putting I my hand down? I wouldn't have taken advantage of you that day. You were useless. But oh, you, you did really well. Oh, and it was over pretty quick, wasn't it, really? I mean, they were brilliant. They were amazing. And everybody who come past me with a uniform on, I was like, by the way, I'm phobic. He came out at one point because they kept taking him from one room to the other <laughs> to do stuff. And then he came out at one point and he was like doing this with his hand. They'd given him a bit of sponge <laughs> to squeeze. So that they... Have you still got it? Oh, no, no, this no. is this is like the window thing. But this bit of sponge, say this is the one they give me in the hospital. I was like... <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, just squeeze it. Let you stress out. I was like... 
by the end of it, I was like... We were all right when you were doing, you were doing yeah. all right. But we got messed about really badly. First time as a disabled rail person user, rail passenger, rail passenger they really messed us about. Yeah. The coach people, brilliant. Rail people, useless. So we were very, very lucky. My best mate, Claire, and her other half, Simon, mm. came to rescue us to take us to from East Gwynstead to the other train station but not just that they actually drove us all the way to London Victoria London, to catch our yeah. coach otherwise we don't know what we were done and we were both so exhausted so that was amazing wasn't it really? yeah so they're passenger assistance people yeah we didn't have much luck with didn't give no assistance no didn't know what they were on about no and the amazing woman whose name I can't remember Amanda Amanda at London Victoria yeah it was fantastic. She was livid that we'd been given weird information. So yeah, it was because of the strike, she wasn't us it? And she was like, oh my God, you must be Finn and you're Chris and yeah. are you looking forward to your eye operation? And she was so on the ball. She was amazing. But mm. the people you book it with that told him yeah. that... So we'd booked a ticket from East Grinstead to London, Victoria. And it said there was a bus transfer. Yeah, replacement, replacement bus. It was a replacement bus because... He tries to tell Finn... That bus has got nothing to do with British Rail, National Rail, wherever yeah. they call themselves nowadays. Um, and if you can't get on that coach, tough, you've got to find your own way to the yeah. next train station. Which I knew was wrong. My mum's dis my mum was disabled, <laughs> so I know that she, you know, if, if they do put on misplacement buses, it's up to them to make sure that they're accessible. I know that because mum's been given taxis before when their buses weren't accessible. But he basically just told me, look, it's not our fault you're disabled. If you can't access the bus, it's passengers' responsibility to get their own transport. That's not what it says on their policy. <laughs> I know. So and she it's was a good livid. job. They're at the end of a phone and not in an office somewhere, isn't yeah, it? Really. Yeah. Really. So that wasn't a great experience, but this uh, really lovely woman, Amanda, she kind of like restored our faith in it, didn't they? So next time, we've got yeah. proper numbers to ring next time, but we are going like, to have a bit of a moan about it, aren't we? Yeah, so but, basically what we were advised to do for anybody in this position yeah. was to contact the local train operator and not the national number, because yeah. they obviously don't know jack shit about yeah. what they're on about. Yeah, if you're travelling anywhere and you want passenger assistance, mm -hmm. find out what train company that is. So for our case, it was Southern. We sh And the next time we'll ring Southern Mail Assist, mm -hmm. not the National Rail assist because yeah. that's who clearly know what they're on about so thanks to claire and simon love yeah. you both we actually had a much easier journey on the way back didn't we and yeah. we, we were doing all right weren't we 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 actually got home and yeah we so we've got national okay. express and their assistance people were amazing yeah, we were fine. and we were in the queue like you are at the airport there's like chairs and the gate and everything and the driver come out just had a look see who was about and um Saw Finn in his chair, went back out, and then he comes back in to let us, everybody on the bus. He was like, you first. Yeah, I'm really good. So that went down well. <laughs> well, everyone kind of sees a chair and just goes, I'll ignore you. <laughs> and just goes, yeah. goes for it, doesn't they? Yeah, so they um, parted. Mm. We, uh, we got on first, and they, ha, ha, I sort of loaded molly onto the coach and they helped. We didn't know how much. Away. Yeah, because we remember you saying last time, we weren't <laughs> sure how much you'd see. But your, your vision after the surgery was actually better than we thought it would be, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. I mean, they say your yeah, eyesight's going to be blurred, so you expect, like, you, mm. it's blurred type of thing. But, but it wasn't in my case, I, I... Oh. Don't, 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 don't. I scratched it earlier on this morning. Oh, my God, I cried. That's because I slapped him. Um, But the eyesight's been... Much better than I thought. And I think the pain it was better been much straight better after. Than I, I think it's deteriorated a bit more this week, hasn't it? Yeah. So but they said that that could happen. A week on Friday, I went for my follow-up and they took the lens out. And since then, it's been stingy, it's been achy. Mm. I've had headaches. Um, but then it, all it is is like when you just woke up and you're sleeping, you have to keep blinking. Um, excuse sneeze. me a minute, there's a big cow coming past us. <laughs> oh my god, there's a big Highland cow behind us. <laughs> I should say we parked up at um, in the middle of Dartmoor. Just, we've just come out for a bit of a drive. <laughs> the people had just pulled up next to us. They soon jumped into there. <laughs> is there like a herd of them coming then? Is there? The, the couple that was pulled up in the car next door just like bolted back into the car. What are Highland cows doing around here? 
scaring people. <laughs> oh, we have Beautiful. a member. Oh, we've, got hey! <laughs> <laughs> we've got a, a <laughs> member of the Finn fam, Natasha, who loves Highland cows. <laughs> so we will I'll show you a picture. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> okay, we're now, so the car's surrounded. steamed up and we can't oh, put it on. <laughs> this recording is currently being stopped whilst we are in the middle of a cow stampede. Okay, yeah. so so that was fun. Okay, we were safe. We're safe from the cows. So what were we saying? I don't know. What, <laughs> I can't remember. We saw these island cows ploughing past the car. <laughs> so basically, everything went fine. Oh, I up went yeah, fine. The, yeah, it's just been since they took the protective lens out. It's been yeah. quite and itchy and stingy and like if you've got really bad eye strain, um, and you I find I have to keep blinking. Yeah. But yeah. But all in all, I managed to look after you. Right. Yeah. Got in there and back. Yeah. I said you went okay. Yes. Yeah. I, we got back. And I've got to have the other one done. She put me on the list. <laughs> yeah, so that's next year sometime. So we, we kind of know what to expect now. So yeah. we got back. And as expected, I crashed. Yeah. And this time I had an awful migraine flare up, didn't I? Which was pretty nasty. Yeah. That lasted a fair few days. And then we went to the hospital, didn't Hang we? on. Hang on. Oh? Oh, no. Yeah, we went to the hospital for Chris's follow-up. That was a long day. That Come was a then. long day. but we But that was fine. Your eyes were fine. We managed yeah. the for Molly's first time on the bus. Oh yeah, I did, I did the first time on a bus with Molly, yeah. which I've been really scared about. I don't know why I'm so anxious about getting it. I'm just scared about getting stuck on a bus on my own and not being able to get off. But I did all right tonight. Well, I did all right on the way there, <laughs> on the way back, because I was so tired. And it is quite a tight space. It was space. a different type of bus as well, wasn't it's it? really it tight space. Yeah, so the it? first one hadn't got run any over poles a man's in feet. the spaces, so you could pull in, in yeah. it easy. This other one, I got poles. Yeah, it's so really hard to manoeuvre. So I'd run over one man's bag and one man's feet. We should have moved them, shouldn't we? Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's not my Simple fault. that, really. I was just so tired. Plymouth City Bus Company. Yeah. Your drivers were amazing. Yeah, they were really kind. Because yeah. Chris kept saying, you know, they got story. faces like bulldogs chewing a wasp, I'll be honest. I yeah. thought we were going to have a bit of issue. He kept saying, I'm really gold. sorry. It's the first time yeah. um, on the bus with this. So they were really kind. But yeah, that went fine. But I was absolutely exhausted. We just get some strange looks when we went, um, he's my chaperone. <laughs> I've just had eye well, surgery and he's course, my chaperone. because I looked like death <laughs> and I was on a mobility scooter. So, of course, people were looking at me funny. So, anyway, <laughs> so all that goes off. So, I, I have my crash, as expected. And he's got two weeks off. So, I think, OK, I'm coming out of my crash. Mm. We can start this. We can just enjoy his last week off together now because you're feeling a bit better. I am. Yeah. No. No. <laughs> no. So, then I get really poorly because I've now had... A tooth infection, like for the last week. Normal people, that's a tooth infection. All right, all right. I've had to listen for book. five days book. for you saying tough. Book. My tough. Book. My, I've got tough ache. Book. No, you've How'd got you book? fucking toothache. How do you say book? Book. It's book. Look at the book. book. Look at the cook book. <laughs> it's a tooth ache. It's a anyway, so <laughs> <laughs> here in Devon. Actually, quite a lot of places, isn't it? Yeah. Really? You can't get an NHS dentist anywhere, <laughs> can you? <laughs> you just can't get an NHS dentist. I've been trying for ages. Because if you remember, when we came back from um, Glastonbury, this happened before, yeah. and then it just kind of randomly went. Like, this this happened, it's this side. Well, ended up finally getting an appointment yesterday, and I've had two teeth removed, hence I'm a bit... <laughs> because I've been on tramadol. I've not noticed no difference. <laughs> so, for this last two weeks... I've chaperoned this one all the way to London, and he's had his eye done. Mm. I've had a crash mm. with the flare-up of migraines, and now I've had two teeth out. And I need the third one out, but she didn't want to take this one out because I had had nothing left to chew this side. Why? This is why he keeps calling me Gummy McGains. Really? Um, you know, so it's just not really been a very good couple of weeks, has it, babe? Really? It's been a bit. Yeah, I mean, isn't it? from my eye point of view, it's been much better than I thought it would be, but 
<laughs> Poor you, been... you've struggled, haven't you? Yeah, and now, I mean, I've, I'm just, I've just been sweating, haven't I, really? Mm. The last couple of days, which is I've a real... I've been getting my kicking in now. That is a real clear sign. Because soon as I lay down, or as soon as I do anything, it just like starts pouring off my head. And we don't know where the water comes from, but it just, mm. just pours off, is not That's a clear sign that I'm crashing. So, yeah, you're probably not going to see much of me at the moment, because I, I, I'm just so behind. There's so much content I'm behind with, so much stuff I wanted to do. But it's just not it's just not gonna happen. Really? No. Is it? <laughs> and then you get a lecture, we went to the hospital because we spent Oh yeah, this is a really bad thing. Mm. Trying to get an appointment for a dentist, you, you really can't get an appointment. I know that because of this, what happened last time. So what you have to do, you have to ring up the only emergency dentist we have every day. They, and then they allocate as many appointments as they can, and when they run out, they run out. So you just have to keep ringing up every day. So knowing this, I rang my doctor and said, okay, this last time this happened, they just gave me some tramadol to help me uh, help help me get through it until the time, you know, because I can't take codeine because it really affects my mental health. I'm, as you know, I'm an addict in recovery, and this seems to be really common among uh, addicts. People who have been in recovery, they seem to not be able to manage codeine. I don't know why this is, but anyway, you'd think it was that easy to get a prescription, but doctors can't prescribe pain relief because of this. For, for tooth pain. It's bizarre. So I had to ring 111. Now, that was who prescribed me pain relief last time. They've changed their rules. 111 can no longer prescribe pain relief. They said they have to get the dentist to prescribe me pain relief. But the dentist can't prescribe me t pain relief till he's spoken to me. The dentist can't speak to me <laughs> till they triage me. And they can't triage me until they've got space. So I was stuck in this loop. And they said, the only thing you can do is go to A&E. So basically, that's what my doctor made me do in the end, isn't it? So I what waste pleaded of energy with and time. Finn's doctors. I was like, you are not telling me some, you are allowing, as a practice, somebody with a chronic illness to suffer with chronic pain nothing will touch it or can't take you're just going to tell me we've just got sit here and he's got to stay in this pain my hero and they're like oh well just a minute so we come back the guy on reception was amazing mm. his ear was well and truly chewed but in um, a nice way you weren't horrible no you were just firm and the doctor phoned finn up at like half past seven that night so he'd been in pain for the best part of like nine hours mm. and said I've referred you to the maxillary department at A and E. Yeah. I mean, the only good thing about that was we, we weren't stuck in the five, six hour wait for the other doctors. It we just had to wait for somebody to well, answer their eight, beat. Nine, ten, 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 Twelve. It's still four hours, wasn't it? Because we got in the A and E at eight, mm. and we got painkillers just before midnight, so it was still four hours. Yeah. I mean, and all of that, if I'd have been, I started ringing around at half twelve, half two, because I did Once a talk. Once you finished your talk, I did it? a talk at, um, mm. between one and two, and started calling around at half two. But it's not, you know, it's not just my pain, it's like, all of the, I mean, it was, it's so busy in A&E. There were like ambulances outside with patients in, there were police vans with people in custody waiting for treatment, there were people in corridors, there was this doctor that kept getting coming out and just saying, look... Mm. We've got so she many gave patients. Us a situation. She it was, was like, so I'm sorry, sad, it's really it? broken. I'm sorry you're at the end of a broken system. Mm. I just want you to have the facts. They'd got 53 patients in casualty that needed a hotel bed. Derryford Hospital was completely full. They'd been offered four beds. Ho hospital bed, you mean? Hotel bed. Hospital beds. Oh, yeah, okay, you said hotel bed. Oh, no, not <laughs> hotel bed. So... Four beds for 53 people. Yeah. And it's just like that. It's so broken. And it's like, you can't get a dentist anymore. The doctor won't prescribe anything for dental pain. Shall mm. I tell you why? Because they don't get paid for treating dental pain. That's ridiculous, isn't it? it you is... do get paid. I pay you NHS dues. Yeah. This is why the system's so messed up. I wonder how many other people were in there and didn't need to be. The trouble yeah. is you can't see a doctor now. You usually see a doctor if it's over the mm. phone. You can't really be treated properly over the phone. So many people are being missed and they're ending up in a and is turning into a rant now. Oh. But it, it's just, you know, there is just... Our healthcare is just going so badly wrong, but it's not just about money and resources, it's about the way that they're doing things. I shouldn't have been in A&E because that was just messing it up 
for those poor people already under mm. over resourced, under resourced and over pressured anyway. One less person could have been in there. There's probably a, a good few other people that didn't need to be in there either. Yeah. If that had just given me a prescription earlier, that was one less burden I could have been. And this really lovely doctor nurse, I don't know what mm. he was, who saw That's us and was really helping. Um, he was like, no, don't you ever th feel like that. You come here, this is not your problem. It, you know, it's not your fault, it's broken. But it does make you feel like that, doesn't it? You I mean, you don't want to go in. It's just awful. But... We, so our mindset was, it wasn't an accident and it wasn't an emergency. Yeah. If Finn could have got a decent painkiller over mm. the counter, because you can't have cocodamol, one of the strongest yeah. ones you can get, if he could have just been given a prescription by the doctor... He wouldn't have needed to have gone there. Yeah, and dark. that's one less person. And then there was a woman in a wheelchair opposite in chronic pain. Her doctor told her to go A and E because it was the only way she'll get seen quicker. It's just crazy. And it's mental. Absolutely mental. So like it's mad system. This is all. now. This isn't even in the winter season. I know. It makes me really scared. Having a chronic illness now and needing like stuff. Makes me really, really scared. It really does. But then finally, you did get through. Yeah. We left it today because we were both shattered. We'd been up early. Oh, no, I did try, but the, but the emergency dentist was closed for, tr for training. Oh, Do you it. remember? Yeah, they were closed for training. <laughs> so I got my tramadol and I got the antibiotics. And the next day, I got up at 8 o'clock. Even I'd had, like, two hours sleep. And the dentist was closed for training, wasn't well, it? Well, we didn't get the tramadol, did we? Because he'd done the prescription He'd done the wrong. prescription. We had to go back the next day. Oh, don't. It's just, honestly, we've just had the worst luck the last couple of weeks. There's been like one thing And then we haven't even other. got all of his tramadol. Oh, God, I know. It just gets worse. Because He's... the chemist... You can't make this stuff up. tiny little chemist associated to the hospital. <laughs> Hello, this is moaning by Finn and Fur. <laughs> and it's like, oh, we can't give you all the tablets. We haven't got all of the tablets. Okay, when will they be in then? Mm. Next week. What do you mean next week? It needs them now. Mm. So, so then she went, oh, uh, I just spoke to the pharmacy and they've been ordered. They'll be in tomorrow. That was Friday. When I we'll did speak you. to them. So they they didn't phone us to say as it was in. So I thought, oh, I'll tell you what, we'll phone them Saturday. Shut. Yeah. When I did speak to a hospital to... and it's shut. Yeah. When I did speak to the um, emergency dentist on the Friday, though, I did just really stress, look, I've got ME, this is making this really so much worse. And she said, look, if we've, you've not heard from us by half five, there's a weekend number, ring that. And the person I spoke to on there seemed to take it all on board, didn't she? Mm. And then she said, look, yeah. we've got an appointment at Newton Abbott tomorrow morning, can you make it? And I could hear him the other end going, yep, we can make yeah. it. So, yeah, that's what we did yesterday morning, nine o'clock. And it was horrific, right? Because when you've got an infection... The numbing injections they give you, there's something to do with your saliva, but it doesn't work as well to numb. So she told me this, it's up to you, we can try it. So I said, go on, because I knew it was better that they were out. So the first time she did the injections, it felt pretty numb. But when she went to take the tooth out, it was not numb. It hurt. So she stopped. Um, and then apparently I didn't look very well because they were like rushing around, shoving a glucose tablet in my mouth and putting cold compresses on. And she said, do you want to stop? And come back, and I was like, No, 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 let's try again. So they'd be able to get in, would you? As, the thing is, that's it. I knew I'd, I'd be in pain for another week, and they needed to come out. So I said, Just try again. So they put loads more injections in, and this time it, it both of them just came out, and it was fine. It was agony yesterday, but like today, it has eased. So fingers crossed, it's going to be all right now. You've got abscess, haven't you, behind you? Yeah, too. got abscess up up here it's basically my wisdom tooth and the one next to it but also the one next to it here which is an old root canal has also gone as well so that needs to come out but she wants to leave that one because it's fine it's not going to cause a problem because it's a root canal yeah. but otherwise i won't have anything to chew because i've just got teeth missing there my old um habits <laughs> of being a drug addict i've lost some molars from back in the day where i used to rub naughty things on my teeth they all know my my old bad ways so it's all right i know so yeah that's that's why so i need now to find an nhs dentist who will take you that won't. out well, well there isn't any i know <laughs> or save up some money to then have them rebuilt i mean you know you can't tell when i do that so it's all right i still look pretty well that's the problem fine. they all do i've been looking at private dental Got cover yep. and they'll do like a plan which is like that's what we're going to look at isn't it yeah but they do the ones I've seen are mostly like two dental checkups yeah. and cleaning and something else. And 
ten percent off the treatment. No, we'd have to look, we'd just have to look at different plans. There's lots right. of different kind of affordable. Anyway, the fact is. We've both got our health issues sorted out right now, hopefully. So now it's just going to be a case of I'm going to crash, you're going to go back to work. Yeah. <laughs> and then we're just going to have to like <laughs> gradually get up some kind of normality. But do you know what? That all sounds like doom and gloom. But we've had a damn good laugh through it all. Yeah, we? I mean, people keep joking about the fact we do. We just do keep laughing. And I just wanted to say, actually, that we haven't caught you up from when we moved in this house. It does feel like loads have gone wrong since we moved into this house. <laughs> because we were supposed to move in and it will go right but I've just oh my god I'm going to add this one you know you know, I put in that mandatory reconsideration uh, for my pip I heard back and it's as we expected no change they're still not giving it to me but we knew that didn't we so I do have to go sure. to a hang on I do have to go for a tr full tribunal so we're going to do that so that hasn't been good news either so it has been one thing after the other but Regardless of all that, yet yeah, we do manage to keep smiling and moving into this house has mm -hmm. been wonderful, isn't it? We yeah. we love this house. So lucky. Just going back to that Pip thing. So they've refused it. They've ignored all of his comments that he brought up and they've said that one of the comments is there's no physiotherapist evidence to support his claims. I know. So I've got his a mean. doctor <laughs> refers him to ME specialist the me specialist says the only thing you can do is refer you to an occupational therapist yeah because i don't so where's the physiotherapist comes into it i know i know it's ridiculous they clearly do how's not a understand. physio going to help your heart condition it's not a heart condition it's part of my me it's part of my me yeah it's part of my me so he's mental they've got no idea what they're, they're talking they're about not and then the other thing is yeah. they're advertising on the job pages these people who sit behind them desks and don't pay no attention with their prejudgments are paid 35 grand a year for doing this, for making assumptions on people. Yes, there's people swinging the lead. Absolutely. 35 grand a year. How many of them are employed mm. up and down the country? Oh, I know. I know. No, I mean, they clearly just don't understand the condition because ME has got nothing. To, I mean, some people with ME might need a physiotherapist. But the way I've clearly explained my condition is post-exertional malaise doesn't need a physiotherapist. It's just a symptom of ME. They haven't understood my condition, basically. So that's what I'll be arguing when it comes to going to court, which is, you know, we knew this was going to happen. He was assessed by a physiotherapist. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> a physiotherapist I know. for this. I know. It makes no sense, does it? It's just like... I know. But let's... Can we end on a positive... How's it been moving into this house for a fair fair? Yeah, it's been lovely. It has, hasn't it? It's been really nice, and it? It's just so cosy. Our landlady is amazing. She's really grateful that she's finally got tenants who will look after it. And, yeah. like, we've done little jobs. And, oh, and the garden. We've done a massive amount on the garden, haven't we? We've shown some of it. I know that some of the, the, the thin... I can't remember who I've shown. I know mem members of the... Discord. Hang on. Flock? <laughs> what's, my, fun? No, what's my club called? I've forgotten what my club Flock? called. What's my club called? Friends of Finn. My brain's gone. Friends of Finn. The Friends of Finn have seen a behind the scenes tour of the house. For sure. And I think I've shown a little bit to the general Friends of Finn. I'm yet to do a full house tour for everyone. Right. I've shown bits of it, but I will do it at some point. But because we've made it really our own now, haven't we? Yeah. Good. So since we moved good. in, we've done like some decorating on the bedroom because yeah, the bedroom yeah. wall had got loads of holes and things, yeah. and there was wallpaper. So oh yeah, they've seen that because someone said it's like proper eighties gay foil wallpaper. Eighties <laughs> gay foil. I know. I was laughing at that. <laughs> boutique, darling. I know boutique. It's, it's his boutique look, isn't um, it? Anyway, we did that on the tube, didn't we? We got them off marketplace. Oh no, doing we're, we're not going to start on. So oh, God, we did that tube, and the, the landlady was a bit worried that it was going to be wrong and too personal, even though we're going to be there for a year minimum. Ten and then years. the chimney breast we did, and then outside in the garden we've done. Yeah. Um, but that's a summer job next year now to finish, isn't it? Yeah. So um, the landlady was really pleased with the difference. So even the people who've come round from the 
estate agents, letting agents, mm. they've been, oh my God, wow, it's amazing. But mm. it's nice, it's cold, excuse me, it's cheaper to heat, isn't it, than the last place? Yeah, and it's small for me to move around in so I can just sit on my perch mm. and still like reach the kill yeah. and stuff. So we're sat in a car park up on Dartmoor. Yeah. Our windows are so steamy. Because we're chatting to way to you. And I'm just waiting dodgy. for the police knock on the door and say, <laughs> what are you doing, chaps? <laughs> Videoing officer. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> yeah, we're recording for OnlyFans. Yeah. So, yeah, that's our catch-up, really. We're doing all right, aren't we? We're going to do a poll. Do you think we should do an OnlyFans page? No, don't answer that poll. <laughs> I'm too tired to do an OnlyFans page. <laughs> don't ask them that question. For goodness people sake. tuning in people for a live stream yes. of watching Finn going... <laughs> <laughs> Don't encourage them. People will say yes. Would you pay money to watch somebody sleep? Stop it! <laughs> well, you've got no pip, money yeah. coming in. Oh, we will because we'll win it. We will win it. I will not. I will not be back down. But we're we're doing well, aren't we? Let's tell everybody how well we're doing. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> it's funny because I tell people this all the time, right? That you, it is possible to have two things exist in the same space. I uh, I feel like crap quite a lot with this ME of mine. I've always said, but, it's not what you go through, it's how you deal with it. Yeah. I love you. I love our life. Aww. I love our beautiful house. So, do you know what I mean? The rest of it is just life, isn't it? It just happens. It's just, yeah, you just got to get on with it, aren't you? It's yeah. just shit happens, but... Onwards and upwards every day. You can see. I I can chew. Life's good. <laughs> Only on the left side, don't we? <laughs> I'll say that tomorrow when the um, Tramadol have completely run out. His top jaw on the right side looks like Stonehenge has been bulldozed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to open my mouth and show you. You don't need to see that. Right. Anything else you would like to add, Mr. Feather? Just whatever you're going through. Oh, God. It's just a day. Something else will happen tomorrow. And good times, bad times, silver clouds, all that. It's right, isn't it? So, you know, it's just... Everyone's going through stuff. It's just some mm. people hide it better. So, and but, I'm on YouTube telling everybody about it. That's the difference, yeah, isn't it? it's just like... It's life, isn't it? you just got to laugh and carry on. And we certainly There's laugh. always somebody out there who'll look after you if you need help. Just ask for help. And... If you think you're going to have a bad day, you'll never be disappointed. <laughs> That's certainly true. Isn't it? Yeah. We all know them people, don't we? Oh, yeah. Yes, we do. Yeah. Right. Cheers to that. Get out the cakes. Yay. We bought cakes. Cakes that I can suck. Go on now, go. Shoot, shoot. <laughs> it's always good when you can I suck I said go, move. We're going to eat cake. <laughs> or do you want pay to watch us eat Look, cake? We got, we got cheap Battenbergs. Yeah. Are they Battenbergs? Cherry Bakewells. Cheap cherry Bakewells. Because you can suck up a cherry Bakewell. Right. Take care, everyone. See you later. Bye. Folks, I am so sorry <laughs> that you had to witness Furfur start to seductively suck his fingers. Um, that man of mine has no shame. <laughs> Watching that back. I'm so sorry you had to witness that. I'm so sorry you had to witness him attempting to pimp me out. On OnlyFans. <laughs> oh my god. Oh dear. So I'm just popping in to do a, a little addition to that ending. <laughs> Not just to clean it up, but just to add a little extra. I um I did crash as as we predicted. A quite an epic crash. So actually this is being uploaded far later than we made it. I think we made it about a week ago and I had an epic epic crash which i am now pleased to say that i'm coming out of but i am bearing on my face witness to that crash because i came out of the crash and thought i was doing all right and then had a bit of a clean up yesterday and look i've done it again haven't i look what's missing look what's missing i'm right now making lots of expressions with my face that you can't tell <laughs> Because they're missing again. Oh dear. I've just got to stop even attempting to trim my eyebrows because this is just not the look I'm going for. <laughs> oh dear. 
I mean, look at them this time, they're even worse. I just did one, and of course, you can't just like not do the other, can you? Anyway, this is not why I checked in. I checked in because <laughs> I'm, sorry, I'm laughing at myself because I can see myself in there, and it just looks so much worse on camera. But anyway, last time you said you couldn't really tell. I think you can definitely tell this time because I left it on number three, which I used to kind of like just blend around the edges. Oh dear. Anyway, I'm going to put my glasses on because it might hide it a bit more. Ah, uh, no, not really. So, apart from my eyebrows, <laughs> I'm doing a lot better, which is nice. Yeah, in a little update to what we were talking about, about the PIP, I've managed to talk to Citizens, Citizens Advice Bureau and they put me through to a charity here in Plymouth called Improving Lives Plymouth and I'm having a chat with an advisor in the new year, which sounds like it's a long way away, but it's not too bad because in terms of lodging an appeal, you can lodge it and then add to it later on. So I'm just literally writing a couple of sentences on the online appeal, lodging the appeal, and then you can add to the appeal at any time up to two weeks before your appeal date is heard. So it's going to be lodged, forgotten about, because most of it is just repeating what I said in the mandatory reconsideration anyway. And then me and the uh, the Improving Lives Plymouth person can go through it in more detail and sort it out. I'm going to make a separate video all about this anyway to update. But I just feel a bit lighter knowing that that's done. So that's good. And obviously the tooth's healed even further now. So that's really good. And there's a few other things that's happening this week to lighten the load a bit more, which I'm going to talk about a bit more in detail. But the reason I'm checking back in now is because I have some of my thanks, mentions and shout outs that I like to do at the end to say some thank yous and welcomes to people. So here we are. It feels like it's like a section with Finn. I don't know, Finn, just shut up and got on with it. Okay, so this month's new members shout out and welcome. We have a big, massive welcome. This is way over you, sorry. Sorry, to Cheryl Lovell. I hope I'm saying that right. I'm notoriously bad with not saying names right. Welcome, Cheryl, as a YouTube supporter. Lovely to have you here. I look forward to seeing you around the comment section with your little loyalty badge. Massive welcome to Wandering Through Libraries, who's joined as a member. I believe I've seen you in our Discord server briefly, I think. If not, hello and welcome. Do come and find us on Discord. It'd be lovely to see you. Also had Max join over on Kofi. Max, you're also welcome to come and join us over on Discord. I've sent you a hello over on Kofi because you can directly message me on Kofi as well. So I've sent you a, a welcome, so please come and join us. Thank you so much for joining our Friends of Fin Club. It's lovely to have you. Also, a massive, ma massive thank you this month to my coffee donors over on my coffee page. Thank you to Natasha Mason, who's always sending me loads of coffee donations and being always lovely and kind. Thank you so much for Chris's card as well for his eye surgery. It was a lovely card. She sent us a card with one of those dogs on the front with the dog collars. Chris needed a dog collar to stop itching his eye. It um, would have probably helped. And thank you also for like sending me lots of messages when Chris had his eye surgery because I was going a bit bonkers that day. And also thank you to Gabe, Gabrielle. Is it Gabrielle or Gabrielle? I never know which way around to pronounce that. Thank you also for your kind coffee donation. Also want to give a massive shout out to Natasha, by the way, because I think it's always really important on this channel we're all a big community of people who have all our kind of different challenges and struggles in life and i think it's really important to big each other up and natasha recently got really like fed up about her job and really wanted to make a change and i think we all kind of can relate to that but it's really hard to make a change because it's like sometimes better the devil you know and we just think oh i'm too scared but natasha like just thought right i'm gonna do this i'm gonna go and get a new job so she went out had an interview got the job straight away and she's just started this new job and she's doing really well so well done so proud of you amazing congratulations and a massive thanks to milo is it milo milo again apologies who sent me some stuff from my amazon wish list and some amazing presents on that it was really lovely also some lovely coloring books on that and i haven't done coloring for ages so that's amazing but the best thing 
Milo sent me was this. You know, I've got one of these Bluetooth eye mask things that have got headphones in. I listen to it for meditation and when going to sleep. But he sent me one of these. It's like this kind of noise machine that's white noise and what have you. And I was going to use it during the day because I thought Chris wouldn't like it. But we have it on at night and Chris loves it. So we're listening to pink noise going to sleep at night and it's helping Chris. But then during the day, I've got in the morning, I've got one of these um, uh, brain fog, brain fog, brain fog, sun lamps, which I have in, on in the morning. And I sit here with my journal and I write my journal and I have the sun lamp on for a bit. And then in the morning with this now, I'm having this on. Bird noise. So I'm having bird noise, my sun on and my journal for the first hour of the morning. Can you hear it? Hang on. It's lovely. It does lots of different noises, but it's kind of all about helping. Well, the white noise, pink noise and brown noise kind of helps you to focus or helps you to sleep. But then there's lots of different ambient noises. So I'm using it for meditation and my relaxation during the day as part of my ME. Um pacing and stuff as well so really lovely so thank you for those for those Milo they're really thoughtful presents and finally I want to give a shout out to Alex who is a member of our Friends of Finn Club and I promised Alex this week <laughs> because we were chatting on Discord um we've got lots of people who are studying and Alex is studying with the Open Uni at the moment and Alex has lots of very complex and quite chronic health problems but bless him he's returned to uni because it's his last time to use up all his credits and although he's got lots of challenges he really really wants to like use his he's he's transferred and it's the last time he can basically use these so he really wants to study so he was doing like this well it's an essay but we it, they're called tma tmas in open uni so it stands for tutor marks assignments and we were all kind of jeering him on this week to get it done. And I said I was waving pom-poms and he said, I'll hold you to that. So here you go, Alex. I'm going to wave some pom-poms for you. Now, I haven't actually got pom-poms, so I have to kind of um, make do with this hat that has pom-poms on it. So I promise I'll wave you some pom-poms because I think you're amazing for managing all of your complex health at the same time as managing to study. So there you go. I promised I would wave pom-poms for you. And not were they, not only were they pom-poms, but it was a sheep hat too. So there you go. It's all about recognising how wonderful and amazing people are. <laughs> there we go. So yes, thank you to everyone. Don't forget if you're a one-off donor on my Kofi page, you do also get access to my exclusive stuff as well. There's lots of exclusive posts and videos for donors for coffee Kofi donors you have access for that for 30 days as and you have access to that when you buy stuff on my Kofi page as well you get access to all of my exclusive videos for 30 days after you buy stuff or make a donation so it's my little way of saying thank you for your massive kindness when you support me in any way so yeah there you go that's all my thanks this month this month, this week. Well, it has been a month, hasn't it? Hello, you're so grubby. Um, because I haven't posted anything for a month. This has been probably one of the worst months, crash-wise, for a, a while. But I kind of knew it would be, really. Because, I mean, let's face it. Going all the way to London on public transport and then trying to look after Chris was never going to be easy. Especially when you come home and then have a dental abscess and two teeth removed. It's never going to go well, is it, really? So, yeah, it's been a tough month. But um, I'm making some changes this week that are pretty epic. Well, they are for me, and I'm going to talk to you about them, um, that are probably going to make things a lot easier going forward, I think. I'll update you about that soon. And there's some really big celebration things happening again. And it's almost Christmas. I'm not quite sure how that's happened. But I bought my very first Christmas thing this week. I bought a sheep ornament. 
and we bought a wreath. I can never say this word. Is it wreath? 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 For the front door. Because I'm just celebrating Christmas this year. We're not even going to fight it. We're just going to just like, it, it's Christmas. We're not, we don't do a big thing about Christmas. We're just going to, well, I'm just going to sleep and eat cheese. Not at the same time. In between, basically. And try not to shave my eyebrows off again. <laughs> anyway. Okay, right. This this week's video has been very long. But after discussing it with you many times, and again in Discord, when I've discovered that there are actually lots of YouTubers who make videos far longer than me, that I'm definitely embracing this now. Because this is just who I am. I am somebody that likes to talk a lot. <laughs> Um, I have a lot to say. I am not a 10 minute video person. The only reason I ever did 10 minute videos is because I was trying to please the algorithm. I'm no longer trying to please the algorithm. I was never trying to be an influencer anyway. And I don't, i have just, it's just never, it's just not me. And I'm done trying to please anybody but myself and those of you who like my content. And all of you who like my content, seem to just be quite happy with whether I put a one minute video up or a one hour video up. <laughs> so it is what it is. And you also seem to be quite happy whether I put a video up with eyebrows or without, which is good really, because you know, you never know whether I'm going to have eyebrows or not. Next week I might not even have hair. And I'm in bed. And by the way, this is the, this is the wallpaper that we were talking about. This 80s gay foil wallpaper. Chris went mad, didn't he? <laughs> I think it's lovely. We are older. We have different taste. It's lovely. Chris did this. I will do this tour at some point. It's now winter, and the outside garden looks very. The outside garden is there an inside garden, Finley? Um, it'll be done. There's so many videos I want to do. You will get them all. Just very late. Anyway, love you all. Have a very, very lovely weekend, and I will see you next week <laughs> in some concept, in some concept, in some capacity. <laughs> Love you, folks. Bye. -bye. So talking boy.